Okay, let me discuss some of the finer points of the Designer Pro software. Uh, when you start up your, your project, the first thing you'll want to do is make sure your I.O. is configured properly. So let's double click on graphical layout. And you'll see that I have these three cards. Let me, let me delete those cards. I'll show you how to populate this list of this, uh, this screen here. Okay, so this is what you'll probably see, like the blank chassis with three slots in it. So if I'm offline, I can click auto configure. If I don't want to do that, I can double, double click and I have a long list of cards. So I suppose if you couldn't auto populate, you could select the cards. Like for example, I think we all have uh, this multifunction card in slot one, um, but I'm going to, I'm going to try to auto-populate. Okay. And I've noticed on this controller, for some reason, it consistently misreads the multifunction card. Uh, there are two varieties. There's a voltage output and there's a current output. We have the current output. So you'll want to select the NOC card. Um, I have two other cards as well, so these are correct. I'll say OK. And that's how I get this screen. So if you don't see this screen, you can't really program any I.O. You can program your controller to do things, but you can't connect it to the outside world. So you'll you'll need to see these three, or at least this one module, for the controller we have in class. Um, once I have that, I need to download that to the controller so it will have an image of how it's configured. Okay, so I've done that. Um, let's look at the main logic now. Right here, I think I mentioned this once before in class, but it this is the default view. It shows a label for this rung, and you can also have comments. So for example, if I if I wanted this rung to say something, let's let's give it a, a label rung one, kind of generic. The comment will say this is a comment. Okay. So you can see what that does. Um, you might have a rung that does a certain function like controls a pump, let's say. You can add a label and a comment. So when you look at the program later, you'll know what that rung is doing. Okay. I don't normally do a lot of that. I don't know why. I probably should do more of it. But um, normally the, the tag names that you use in your program are, are pretty self-explanatory. So if you have three pumps in your system, pump one, two, and three, it'll be pretty obvious as you look at the, the logic what's going on. Uh, but you probably should add comments, especially for someone who's uh, coming behind you to look at the program, I'm sure they would appreciate that. So it's not a bad idea. Most people just don't do it. Um, in all the years I've been programming, normally I just don't see a lot of it. Um, I'm not sure that's good or bad, but that's just the way things generally are. Uh, something I like to do is I like to turn off the label and comment because it kind of minimizes the display, it kind of shrinks it down, and I'm not looking at blank labels and comments every rung, you know, over and over. It basically just takes up screen space, and I'm not using it, so I turn that off. Now, they're still there, though, but I'm, I'm just not looking at them. Okay, so let me, um, let me put together a very basic, like what I like to call the most basic program. What I'll do is click on PLC instructions, and I think I will anchor those. There's a little thumbtack here. I'm going to anchor those. So in this program, the output coils are called normally open coil. Now, this is something that I've honestly, I can't say that I've seen it before in other 
controllers. A normally closed coil. It's kind of unusual. That's like a coil that's always on. And I'm just not really familiar with that. Uh, normally, we turn things on to make them operate. We don't turn them off to keep them from operating. It's a little different. And um, I'm sure there's a use for it. I have no doubt. It's just that, uh, generally speaking, it's easier to think in terms of positive control logic where I'm trying to turn things on instead of turn them off. So you may find a use for that. You never know. Um, but there it is. So let's use the open coil. I'll just drop it right there. And let's say that this coil is going to be um, an output. So I will double click on it. My tag name. And you, you notice I have lots of outputs. Um, module one is the multifunction card. I have four. Module three is a 16 output card. So I have one through 16. Um, a, a lot of, a lot of programs start with zero as the first output. So this one's a little different, but it's okay. Nothing wrong with that. So let's say this is output one. Okay. Um, I think I can change. Let's try to change the, the last part of that. I'm going to call it pump. Okay. Well, golly. Let's see if I can. This doesn't want to change it. Um, I think if I go back to the hardware, let's go back to the hardware for a second. Tag name, output one. Let's see if I can change it here. And let's go back to the main logic. I would like to see if I can pick that up. M1 dot pump. Okay, so I can do it, but I have to do it down at the card level. Okay, so I will edit um, where it is. So you can do it. It's, you just can't delete the M1. Let's try to delete the M1. I'm just curious. Let's get rid of that. Now oh, it came back. Did you see that? It came back. So the M1 defines where it is. So the the part of the name after the dot, you can change. So I guess, you know, it's okay. Every program will have its curiosities, its peculiarities, you know, certain things it likes to do, and that's just all we can do. So there is a way around it, and I mentioned it in class, and that is that I could change this name here to, oh, um, that's fine. And then later on, I could have a contact called pump that turns on the output, which is now known as pump. I'll have to go back and change that. Let me change that. And I'll leave it like it like it was. Default names. And what this does is allows me to use whatever name I'd like to use throughout my program. And then I just sort of map that to the physical. I have to change this as well. Um, one, I didn't update it. Uh, how can I update it? Let's see. Let's see if it's, oh. Uh, Oh, that won't go back. It won't go back because I used this in my program. So let's get rid of that. Let's see if I can change it now. Ah, it won't let me change it. That's odd. I guess I created a monster here. Um, so don't do that. You might decide to change the outputs later on. That's that's interesting. I didn't expect that really. So I would recommend not changing the names at the, at the card level. Instead, I would say to do this, okay? What you can do is the last 
four or five or however many rungs you need at the bottom can map your your tags your internal coils out to the outside world so i've kind of created a problem here i guess i have no choice i want to finish this up and run it so i'm just going to go back and use that okay so this doesn't do much let's but let's download it And we're going to run it, and we're going to watch it on the screen. Okay, and I'm going to go online with it. I'm going to right-click and go to monitor mode. Now, I have a light connected to the controller, and I can see it. It is on right now. So this, this output is on. Uh, the pump is on because it's just hardwired. Okay. And I do have a push button, input 2. So let's go back and edit this. Go back to edit mode. And I'm going to drop a contact here from the push button. Okay. I'm, going to, I'm just going to go with input two right there. Okay. Now we'll go back to monitor mode. And when I do that, it downloads the logic and I'm back in run mode now. So let's push the push button. I think I'm not in monitor mode now. I am. Hit the push button, pump turns on, pump turns on the physical output, and it, it is turning on and off as I watch it here. Okay. So you might be wondering, well, can I can I map the uh, the inputs to a oil called push button? And yes, you can. Let me show you how you do that. Let's go to uh, let me move this up. I'm going to put a coil over here called push button. It didn't connect it properly. So there's a wire tool, a line tool. I'll just drag it over there. Okay. Down here, I'm going to put an open contact. That's going to be called push button. I type a few letters and it picks it up. I go back to monitor mode. And let's try it out. Okay, so the push button runs the pump. This other stuff, like you know, this mapping, like I like to call it mapping. Um, I might just might be better off if I move that rung down. So let's um, let's cut that one. Let's paste it at the bottom. Okay. So pump turns on the physical output input two turns on a coil known as push button but i use a contact out of that coil out of that relay if you want to think of it that way to turn on the pump so if you don't like to see this this stuff right here what i can do is let's see if i can select both of these and cut them okay what i will do is create a subroutine called mapping. I'm going to right click and uh, insert what I cut out. I'm going to get rid of this one. Here. Sorry if I'm going kind of quick here, but you can replay it a few times. I'm going to turn that off. Go back to the main logic. Down here at the bottom, I'll put a rung. Oh, I left out one thing. I'll fix it here. I'm going to put a call subroutine instruction call the mapping subroutine okay back in mapping i have to put a return instruction at the bottom okay what that does is it kicks back control to the main program so let's get rid of this for a second but what happens is in fact i probably should put this at the top so let's cut that one Let's, um, that looks better to me. So what I'm going to do is jump down and look at the inputs, come back and do something. Uh, so let's, let's download this. We'll do a, uh, OK, 
Okay, so let's right click. Oh, I'm already in monitor mode. Let's go online. There we go. Um, so my main logic looks like this. My subroutine looks like that. Let's let's start at the subroutine. So I push it. That's just like before. Let's go to the main logic, and it looks it looks a little better. I don't see all the details as far as the mapping goes. I do have this call to the subroutine. I do have to do that at some point. I don't have to do it at the top. Let's go off. Let's go back to edit mode. Uh, I can cut this. I don't think I can drag. No, I can't drag it. So I'm going to cut it. Put it at the bottom. And then let's go back online. And I'm going to use this project. And then I'm just going to hit the button. So you don't notice any difference. Technically, you know, things are happening so quickly that you don't really notice much of anything. Um, that's good. That's the way it should be. Um, I was looking for diagnostics on the controller. Let's see. Let's see what I'm looking for here. Let me show you a few things while I'm while we're on the screen. Um, when I have a program downloaded, all the tags that I have in my program are on this unmonitored tag list. Okay, here they are. Um, by default, there are no monitored tags. So if I would like to monitor a tag, what I can do is um, add it to the monitored tag list. So let's let's see if I can do that. Right click. I don't want to do it there. Let me find it. Here's my add to monitored list. Push button. I can add that as well. Go to the monitored list, and I can see those two tags here. And when I push the button, I can see the current value of the tags. So what this allows me to do is monitor what's going on in, in the system, okay? So our system has an analog card, and I think that was, that was what we worked on in class to set up that potentiometer. So let's look at that real quick. Um, if I go back to the hardware for a moment, um, and go to monitor mode, you can see, okay, look at input one right here. I've got the pot hooked up. You see the numbers going up and down. If I run it down to the bottom, the lowest value, it's like 2795. Uh, input two has a zero and a one, so it's bouncing back and forth. I have output one connected physically to input two. So if I change this number, if I double click and change it to a hundred, we can have output two connected to it. Let's see. Um, let's see if I can Oh, no, I do have it. I have my, uh, let's see what I got here. I'm looking at the, the wire and okay, a wire came loose. Uh, I have a, I have a process meter set up to monitor the loop current so I can see what's going on. There we go. Okay, I have four milliamps on my meter. And if I if I put this back to zero, the okay, output two is the one that's driving input two. I have four milliamps. I can't see any more than four. I don't have like four point. I don't have another decimal point. 
but if I um, if I put 4095, it goes up to 20. Okay, so this is a 4 to 20 card. If I do like half of that, which would be about 2,000, I get 12 milliamps. So it's working great. You notice that this number on the bottom is, is sort of following the number that I'm putting in right here, 100, 103. So this is a good way to just test the the I/O connections. I'll put zero. Uh, got something weird set up here. Let me let me look at it. Pull that wire. I like that better. So if I turn this knob, you can see okay, it, it's working good. So the pot goes down to about 1800. It goes up to 4095. So I can't go down to zero because it's just a pot and a resistor. But the uh, but you get the idea. Okay. If if I'd like to see that on the monitor tag list. I can go here to I.O. tags. Um, input register one is my pot input. So let's see if I can add that to the uh, my, to my list. I'd like to see that. I'll find it here. Input register one. Okay, and there it is. So eighteen forty. To 4095. So that's working well. Um, so let's try to use that somehow in a program. Let's just give it a try here. So what I'd like to do is I'm going to go to edit mode and add a new rung above that one. And let's do, uh, I do have a, a lamp connected on output two. So let's write a, a little rung here that will turn on the light if the uh, if the current goes above 12 milliamps. Okay. So what I'll do is I'll bring up my PLC instructions again. And what I really should do, I probably should convert the number into milliamps. So I'm going to do a scale linear. Okay. Input tag, that is input register one. Okay. Now point one, that's going to be the low point. That was 1840. The high point was 4095. My output tag, I'm going to call it um, channel 1 milliamps. So I have input 1, input 2. So channel 1 can be this one. Output 1, okay, that's that pop-up. It wants to know how to create this tag, and I found out that it has to be the same data type as the input tag, so <clears throat> we don't have much choice there. Uh, on the low end, that's going to be four. On the high end, it's going to be twenty. Okay, so let's let's look at that. Let's go back to uh, monitor mode. It will download. Get everything ready. Okay, so look at that little number there, four. Okay. Four and twenty. Okay. Now I know it's not really four. If it was four, it'd be this number would be zero at this point. But this just illustrates how to use the scale linear function. Um, to do this, to make this correct, let's go back and change it. Now let's double click on it. Maybe make it hit edit mode. Double click. So really is zero. Zero would be four. So let's do that. Ah, so I really have 11 milliamps right now in, in that loop. And I don't have my meter set up on that loop, so I can't tell for sure, but I'm sure that is correct. So really I'm going from 11, 11 to 20. Okay, well, that's good to know. 
let's insert a blank line here. I'm going to use some comparison, which is a uh, greater than. Here's a greater than. I'm going to put it over here. So if if the tag known as channel one milliamps is greater than 12, I would like to turn on output two. That would be this. And I'm going to use module one output two. So what I'm doing here, let me get rid of that, is uh, this doesn't do anything. It does turn on output one. Um, this converts the hot value into milliamps. This compares the milliamps with 12, and this turns on output two. So let, let me be consistent. Let me change this to over 12. Okay. So over 12 is a tag that I'm going to have to include in my mapping routine. So let's add a line here. Go down here and I'll get over over 12. That's going to turn on module one output two. I'm going to go back to monitor mode. It's kind of a long video. I didn't think it was going to be this long, but it illustrates a lot of the steps that we go through. Um, so let's let's push, hit the push button. Okay, there's the uh, pump. Let's go back to the main logic. I'm going to turn my pot a little bit. You'll see it go up to 12 and then 13. Okay. The output light did turn on. And you saw it turn on on the screen here. So there's an example of how I would use that. Okay. Um, so it's pretty straightforward. Once you set up your your IO wiring, everything else becomes software, just programming. Okay. Right now, I, I would say what we're talking about is just very basic controls, uh, turning on outputs, doing a little bit of math. You know, uh, nothing too sophisticated yet. I could add a time delay though. So let's. One, one thing I notice here is that if if I turn up the pot just, I guess, to like 12 point, let's call it 12.95, it flickers because I'm, I'm bouncing above and below. You can see the numbers changing a little bit. So if I put a filter on this where this won't turn on unless a half second has gone by, I think I can avoid that chattering. I like to call it chattering. So let's try that. I need a, let me go back to edit mode. I need a timer. Let's look for a timer. There's a, there's a timer. I'm going to click. I don't want to put it there, but, but I will. So I'm going to put it right there. Um, basically, I'm replacing it. I'm going to go back and do that right. Let's get rid of that. I'm going to draw. I'm going to pull a timer up and put it right there. So it's an on timer. Let's do it in just, I guess, milliseconds is fine. So this is going to be called the over 12 delay. My preset, let's say it's going to be 500 milliseconds. So notice that it creates some some tags for me. One is called done. That's the one I'm interested in. So let's okay that. And let's, let's just see what this does. Okay, so if I turn up my pot, see how it starts to time once I go above 12. So I'm going to set it to where I think it should be chattering. Uh, it's touchy. Let me, I'm trying to get it. Ah, there it is. Okay, see the numbers jump, jumping around a lot. That's the point where, um, it, it would be blinking the lights on and off. 
So this getting on pretty close there. Three getting up to 500. I might want to change this delay to something higher. Let's make it a, a 750. So let me go ahead and add new line. I'm going to put my um, open contact from that timer. It's called over 12 delay. Find it. Okay, the done bit. That is going to go to coil known as over 12 milliamps, over 12. Let's go to monitor mode. Ah, oh, look at that. So the problem is that I haven't really fixed the problem yet. Um, I'm filtering it so it has to be on long enough, but when it when it drops below 12, it turns it off again. So that's not really filtering. It's not really fixing the problem. Um, what I could do is I could set up what's known as a dead band so that when it goes above 12, it turns on and stays on. When I go below 11, it uh, turns off. That's not ideal, but it would definitely work. Um, so what I do that, so let's get rid of the timer. Let's go back to edit mode. Let's get rid of this guy. Let's put a uh, oil here, and I'm going to call this uh, over 12. I'm going to call it latch, but it's not really a latch. It's just a name, right? Right here, I'm going to hold down the control button and draw a, draw a branch, but I can't. Let's move this over a little bit. Come on, there we go. Let's get contact here called over 12. I'm doing a sealant circuit. In this program, I just like draw the lines in. So there's a latch. Let's run that. And I'm going to copy this. Control C and paste it here. Control V. Let's just see what this does. I know what it's going to do, but it's not going to do exactly what we want, but we'll try it anyway. And I, okay, I've already got it triggered. So here I'm at 11. Here I'm at 20. So it, it turned on one time. And I can't get it to turn off. So this is your classic start stop circuit. I mentioned it before in class that this this is the start function and the seal in. But I need a way to stop it. So it's got to be out here in front or right hand side. So I'm going to stop it if I go below 12. Below below 12? Yeah, below 12. So it's turning on at the upper end, like 12.99. I need to turn off at 12.00. Let's give this a try. Okay, so I'm going to do um, greater than, less than. Go back to edit mode. Let's look at my choices here. Less than, I think less greater than. So um, let's put a blank line in here. I'm going to copy this. Paste it in here. And here we 
replace it with a less than, less than 12. Let's uh, connect this over here. I need a coil called 12 reset. And I've got to put it right here. I'm going to do the normally closed, let's squeeze it in there. This is over, over 12. Reset. So it, it seems like it's getting complicated, but this is how things really work. Uh, we start out with a, with a concept and we just sort of build on that. So we find all the problems, the things we didn't expect, and we sort of fix them. Okay, so let's, let's look at this before I download it. Um, if, let's say I'm at 11. 11 is less than 12, the reset is on. Uh, this will be off right here. Okay. If I go up to 12, um, as soon as I go past 12, this will turn on and this will, um, let's, let's give it a try and see how it works. Right now I'm at uh, 11, so reset is on. Uh, this is this is open because it's not off, if that makes sense. So as I creep up past 11, get up to 12, you see how it changes. So basically, when I get to 12, I can operate the latch. Okay, so let's keep going. We'll go up to 13, latched on. I'm going to creep back down to 12. You see how it didn't turn off yet? Okay. So when I get below 12, it resets. Okay. So what this has done for me, let me, let me creep up. I wish I could see more than just uh, whole numbers. And I can do that, uh, but I have to do a little bit more math. Um, but you see how it, it, it's just consistently on now. If I go low enough, it'll turn off. So let's let's convert this into a, a floating point number, which has got a little more precision this than this 11 right here. I'll leave this in there just because. Let's put a, a, a blank line below this line. Now I need to look at my math instructions. I'm going to leave this out here. I don't have a lot of math that I can work with, but and I really need to write an equation for this. I don't have one in front of me. Um, let's see if I can just do this on the fly here. So I will be 0 to 20. Uh, the rise will be 40, 90, Five, let's see, it's a 20, four to, six, four to 20 is 16. Um, 16 over, okay. So I'm gonna multiply, oh, this is not gonna go too well. I'll, I'll, let me give it a shot. Uh, I'm gonna take the raw input register value Okay, I'm going to multiply that by 16. I'm going to save that in result one, which is going to be a decimal value. Let's try to turn that into a float. Okay, let's see if I can do that. Oh, I can't do that. Oh. Gonna have to look in the instruction manual. This doesn't really make sense to me. Uh, I'd like to be able to calculate values with a little more precision, but let's try something even simpler than that. Multiply. Let's do a divide. In fact, hang on. Let me look a little bit deeper here. Um, is there a way to convert? Let's, let's, let's try 
one more thing here. If not, if it won't work, I'll just have to close this video off and, and approach it a different way some other time. Let's pull in the uh, register. Wow. I don't like that at all because it's locking me into integer math and I'd really rather not do that. So it's odd to me because normally you can do that. So I'll have to dig into that a little bit. Um, I feel like there's a way to do it. I just don't, right now, I, I just don't see it right off. Anyway, this got a little bit deeper than I thought I was going to get. But um, but you can see how this works. So we, we start out with an idea of what we want. We just add the functions that we need to make it work. Sometimes it gets a little tricky like it did here. And that's where, you know, you really should do it on paper. I'm trying to do this as I'm talking. And uh, sometimes things work out well and sometimes they don't. But it's better to do it on paper first so you can uh, think it through. You know? If, if this is totally foreign to you, like you've never seen anything like this before, I understand. I think when I started my career, I experienced the same problem. Uh, I was kind of thrust into a position where I had to fix an automated production system and I'd never seen it before. So I sat down with the manuals and read them. And after a couple of weeks, I had a pretty good feel for it and I was able to straighten it out. So, um, Sometimes it just takes uh, some reading. Uh, fortunately, if you see if this has it, um, if you go to the help section on this program, um, you've got the contents right here. I don't know if this is on the video, but if you go to the help tab, uh, you can you can find out as much as you'd like to know about all these instructions. Okay, so I'm going to stop the video there.